Welcome to the next episode of the sorting functionality for the inventory. Today, we will implement the ability to sort items by name and type. In short, we are introducing sorting by strings. Let's get started. Start in the BPC inventory component. Add a new function and name it sort items by name. Move it to the sort category and mark it as private. Add two inputs to the function. The first is named sort by. With the data type e sort items by. The second is named ascending sort order. With the data type boolean. To keep things organized, drag this function higher in the list to maintain a logical order. Compile and save your changes. From the sort by pin of the function. Search for and add a switch on E underscore sort items by node. This setup will work similarly to how we implemented sorting for the sort items by amount function. For the weight and amount execution pins of the switch, drag out and add a print string node. Connect both execution pins to this print string node. On the in string pin of the print string node, search for and add an append node. In the A pin of the append node, write the text, sort is not supported by. Drag the sort by pin from the function and connect it to the B pin of the append node. This setup dynamically provides feedback if the sorting method is unsupported, helping with debugging and maintaining clarity. Drag the item slots variable into the graph and search for a for each loop node. Connect the name and type execution pins from the switch on sort items by node to the execution pin of the for each loop node. This will allow us to loop through all items in the inventory. From the array element pin of the for each loop, search for and add the is slot not empty function. Use the not empty pin of this function to create a branch. Connect the loop body execution pin of the for each loop to the execution pin of the branch. From the array element pin of the for each loop, drag again and add a break node for the s underscore inventory slot structure. Hide all pins except for item data asset to simplify the node. Drag the item data asset pin from the break node and search for load asset blocking. This ensures the item's data asset is properly loaded. Connect the true execution pin of the branch to the load asset blocking node. From the return value of the load asset blocking node, call the interface function get item asset. From the item asset pin, Call get item name to retrieve the item's name. Drag from the item asset pin again and call get item ID. The item ID will be used for sorting by type, while the item name will be used for sorting by name. Create a local variable named array to sort string. Change its data type to string and set it as an array. Drag this variable into the graph and search for the set array elem node. Connect the execution pin from the get item asset node to the set array elem node. Take the array index from the for each loop and connect it to the index pin of the set array elem node. This ensures that the array elements are correctly indexed. Now, we need to determine what data to store in the temporary array. Drag the sort by pin from the function into the graph and search for the select node. Connect the return value of the select node to the item pin of the set array elem node. From the select node, connect item ID to the type pin and item name to the name pin. The necessary conversion nodes will be automatically added. Enable size to fit on the set array elem node to dynamically adjust the array size. Select the area after the for each loop and add a comment that says, generate a temporary array to sort items. This part of the function generates a temporary array of strings containing the sorting criteria, such as item name for sorting by name or item ID for sorting by type. This array will later be used to sort the original item slots array based on the selected criteria. It ensures the sorting logic remains flexible and organized. After the temporary array is filled, 
continue from the completed execution pin of the first for each loop. Drag the pin and search for another for each loop node. Drag the array to sort string variable into the graph and connect it to the array pin of this new for each loop. Now comes the tricky part, as the sorting algorithm can be difficult to follow. I will explain it as clearly and concisely as possible while guiding you through each step. This second loop is where the actual sorting logic will happen. It will iterate over the temporary array to determine the correct order of elements based on the selected sorting criteria. By comparing the string values in the temporary array, we will swap the corresponding items in the item slots array to ensure they align with the sorted order. Connect the loop body execution pin of the for each loop to a for loop node. Take the array index from the for each loop and connect it to the first index pin of the for loop. Drag the array to sort string variable into the graph and search for the last index node. Connect the output of the last index node to the last index pin of the for loop. Next, drag the array to sort string pin into the graph and search for get a copy. Connect the index pin of the for loop to the index pin of the get a copy node. From the get pin of the get a copy node, search for the len node under string to get the length of the current string. Similarly, drag the array element pin from the for each loop into the graph and search for len under string. Take the first len node's output and connect it to a greater than node. Connect the output of the second len node to the lower pin of the greater than node. From the result of the greater than node, search for a select node. Connect the first len node to the false pin of the select node, and connect the second len node to the true pin of the select node. Take the return value from the select node and connect it to a subtract node with a value of 1. Search for a for loop with break node and connect the output of the subtract node to the last index pin of this new loop. Connect the loop body execution pin of the previous for loop to the execution pin of the for loop with break node. This part prepares the logic for comparing string lengths in the array to sort string. It loops through the array, calculates the lengths of strings, compares them using a greater than node, selects the appropriate length, subtracts one to adjust the index, and uses a for loop with break to control iterations for sorting. Drag the get a copy node's output pin and search for get character as number which converts a character in the string to its numeric ASCII representation. Duplicate this node and place it below. Connect the array element pin from the for each loop to the second get character as number node. Use a reroute node to organize the connection neatly and improve the readability of the graph. Adjust the nodes and reroutes for clarity. Take the loop body execution pin from the for each loop with break node and add a branch. Similarly, take the completed execution pin from the same node and add another branch. For the condition pin of the completed branch, search for the get ascending sort order variable, which determines whether the sorting should be ascending or not. This branch will control the sorting direction. From the return value of the first get character as number node, add a not equal node. Connect the return value of the second as number node to the second pin of the not equal node. From the first get character as number node again, take its return value and add a greater than node. Connect the return value of the second as number node to the second pin of the greater than node. Repeat this process but add a less than node this time, using the same return values. These nodes will help compare the numeric ASCII values of characters in the strings, 
determining their order for sorting based on ascending or descending criteria. Take the true execution pin from the completed branch and create another branch. Do the same for the false execution pin of the completed branch by adding another branch there as well. From the result pin of the not equal node, connect it to the condition pin of the branch in the loop body. This ensures the sorting logic checks if the characters being compared are different. Next, take the result pin of the greater than node and connect it to the condition pin of the branch created from the true execution pin of the completed branch. This branch determines if the sorting should handle greater than conditions. Finally, take the result pin of the less than node and connect it to the condition pin of the branch created from the false execution pin of the completed branch. This branch handles less than conditions, ensuring proper sorting logic for descending order. Take the true execution pin from the branch in the loop body and connect it to the break execution pin of the for loop with break node. This ensures that as soon as the sorting condition is met, the loop exits early, optimizing performance by avoiding unnecessary iterations. Then drag array to sort string into the graph and search for the swap array elements node. Connect the true execution pins from both branches created in the completed execution path to this swap array elements node. Next, drag item slots into the graph and search for another swap array elements node. Connect both swap array elements nodes, ensuring that swaps in array to sort string and item slots happen in sync. Now, handle the indices for the swaps. Go back to the for each loop of array to sort string. Drag its array index pin and create a reroute node. Then, take the index pin of the for loop and add another reroute node slightly above the first one. Take the last reroute node from the for loop index, drag it toward the swap array elements node and add another reroute node for better organization. Repeat the same process with the array index reroute node, ensuring it connects to the swap array elements node as well. Make sure the array index reroute node is positioned below the first one to maintain a clear and logical hierarchy in the graph. Take the last reroute node for the for loop index and connect it to the upper pin of the swap array elements node for array to sort string. Repeat this process for the array index reroute node connecting it to the lower pin of the swap array elements node for array to sort string. Ensure the same connections are made for the item slot swap array elements node. Why we perform swaps in array to sort string and item slots? The array to sort string serves as a temporary helper array that holds the sorting criteria, such as names or types, for the items. Swapping in this array ensures the sorting logic operates on the correct data. However, the actual items being managed are stored in item slots, so we need to mirror the swaps in that array to maintain the correct order of items in the inventory. By keeping both arrays synchronized, the sorting process works seamlessly across the data used for logic in the actual inventory display. Go to the for each loop of array to sort string. Drag the fix slot index function into the graph. Connect the completed execution pin of the for each loop to this function. Ensure the clean empty slots checkbox is checked. This ensures the inventory remains tidy by removing empty slots after sorting. Add a return node to the function's execution flow and organize the nodes for better readability. If you followed the steps correctly, your function should now be well structured and easy to understand. Save your work and move to the event graph. Here, drag the sort items by name function into the graph. Connect the name and type execution pins from the sorting system to this function. Connect the sort by pin to its corresponding input on the function. Then, connect the output of get sort ascending to the ascending sort order pin of the function. Before testing, open the four item data assets to check their details in the edit matrix. Press Alt plus P to enter play mode. Add some items to your inventory, open it, and test sorting by name and type. You should now be able to sort items seamlessly in both ascending and descending order. 
When sorting by name, items will be ordered alphabetically from A to Z for ascending and from Z to A for descending. Similarly, sorting by type will organize items based on their category or classification, in our case the item ID, following the same ascending and descending logic. Before ending the episode, go back to the inventory component, select the relevant nodes for the sorting logic, and add a comment titled, Sort Items, to keep the graph organized. This concludes today's episode, where we successfully completed the sorting functionality for the inventory. You can now sort your items effortlessly by amount, weight, name, and type, with both ascending and descending options working perfectly. What would you like to see next? Should we explore additional sorting features, refine the weight system, or perhaps dive into other inventory mechanics? Let me know your thoughts and suggestions in the comments or join the discussion on Discord. If you enjoyed the video, do not forget to leave a like or subscribe to the channel to stay updated with future tutorials and episodes. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.